Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I uh, thought I'd do a little video on a new model that I have and uh, provide you guys with some tips and some tricks and some modifications and share my setup with it. And also some of the things I like and dislike about the way it flies, uh, etc. So, for those of you who don't know, this is the new Freewing MiG-29. It's a twin 80 millimeter with two brushless inrunners. Uh, 100 amp ESCs. It's a very large model. It's bigger than the Tomcat, which is a pretty big model. And uh, yeah, it's definitely girthy, we'll call it. Uh, let me first go over some of the stuff that I've changed on it. Um, I've done just some little detail stuff. I plan on probably repainting this whole thing at some point, but for now I'm just going to leave it alone. But I did do a couple of things. I painted the struts silver, got rid of all the white plastic stuff. Um, I repainted the wheels a little bit different green. I changed the main wheels, not for any particular reason, but because I kind of like these and they got bearings in them. So these are the FMS F7F wheels. Um, I'll probably make some hubcaps for them at some point, make them look a little more scale. But um, another thing I did was I cut about a half inch of spring out of the main struts. So I got a real nice soft strut now and it actually sits on the ground about about a half an inch compressed so it doesn't it doesn't sit so high out off the ground in the back and it uh, helps it rotate a little better I think I'm able to hold the nose off real nice and when you land it you can see them actually working instead of being too stiff like they are from the factory and they don't really do a whole lot they're so stiff that they only really work if you smash into the ground so um, I did cut a little bit of the nose spring but not a whole lot it's already pretty soft as it was so I'm not too worried about that um, another another mod I did was uh, normally these doors stay open while the gear down and they look kind of dumb that way so so the way it works now is that uh, there's actually a on the blue box up here there's different options for gear doors so all I did was there's other ways to do it but all I did was I unhooked the servo wire from the little board in the wing on both sides and ran a Y cord and just plugged those in separately when I put the wings in and then <clears throat> I forget which one it is so if you look on the back of the blue box there's a few options um, okay so currently I have the Y harness on the um, double stage door that's the connector right there for my Y harness. So that uh, opens up the doors, the gear go in. And then they close. Which I like it that way. Um, the real one has the doors on the other side. And so not, they're not as obvious as these ones are when they hang down. So. Anyways, that was one of the mods that I liked. Um, let's see. So let's go over battery placement or other mods. Actually, let's finish up with that. So um, one thing that we discovered, my friend Justin told me to try, and then I ended up kind of taking it a step further. So uh, he said to put up, a, put a little bit of reflex in your flaps because this this has a very flat bottom airfoil on it. It's not 100% flat bottom, but it's definitely not symmetrical so he was experiencing issues with the airplane wanting to tuck uh, at fast speeds and you know meaning pitching down so what I ended up doing was putting about an eighth of an inch of reflex in other words I've put the flaps up an eighth of an inch and I've done that same thing with the ailerons this one's trimmed out for flight so it's not quite perfect but you get the idea. So if it were matching the flap, that's that's about what it would look like. About an eighth of an inch. Um, when I made that change, there's, I made a couple of a couple of um, discoveries, especially with doing both. I did. I started off with just doing the flaps, and then I did the ailerons. So one thing I ended up doing was relieving some of the up trim. So as you can see, this is my neutral up trim right now. And it's basically center line on this lower body panel. Um, normally, 
before that I was, you know, I had a good amount of upturn in it. So basically what we've done here is change the shape of the airfoil and it no longer requires as much up trim, which also alleviates stress on the elevator servos. So we did that. Uh, let's see. I have RC Geek center burners on this bad boy. And I did the metal tape inside. I did try smaller tailpipes um, with Mylar and didn't really notice much of a gain in performance versus other guys' MiG 29s that we flew with. I flew with some friends that uh, both did my cheater hole mod, which I'll show you in a second. And top speed wise, mine versus theirs, both with the cheater hole mod and the inlet mod was very similar. So I went ahead and took them out. Um, Cause at that point, all they're doing is adding amp draw to your, to your power setup. So, cause it constricts the flow. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that's, so you can see the reflex in this side. I've got more right aileron than left, so I'm, I might have a little bit of elevator trim I need to figure out. But, uh, so before I show you my inlet mods and flip this thing over, let me show you where my batteries are. So I got my receiver up here. I'm running Heroic Top 6250-35C packs. I love these batteries. I need lots and lots of them. They're wonderful. Uh, I run bullet connectors, so that's why the stock blue connectors are gone. And I put the BEC on this wire. That way I can keep this tucked inside in there. And my RC Geek Center Burner battery goes in here too. I just kind of toss it in there. So basically what I do is I put the rear battery all the way back. And the front battery basically all as far back as I can get it. I can't really get it back any farther, otherwise the hatch won't stay down. And that's with me grinding out some of the hatch to get the battery farther back. So that's my battery placement. Uh, these batteries are pretty light for their size. They weigh less than my old Hobby King 5830Cs. So super happy with them. Um, CG wise, uh, this is the CG mark right here. I'm actually about a half an inch farther back behind the factory CG mark. So, and honestly, it feels pretty neutral. I could probably go back a little bit more and be okay, but I can't get my packs any farther back. And I'm not going to go adding tail weight to it. So I like it where it's at. It's very stable on landing, which is super nice. Let's get it turned over and I'll show you guys the other mods that I did to it. All right. So these need to get painted. But uh, one thing I did, um, I started off by, oh, well, let me let me go back. When I first ran this thing up, I noticed that uh, it sounded like the fans were starved for air, which I didn't really believe because this has pretty big inlets, and it had cheater holes, and it has cheater holes right here in the gear wells. And I'm thinking, no way is this having issues getting air. But uh, one of the things I noticed is that the inlet lips are super sharp, and that's not something you want for smooth airflow. So I went ahead and rounded them all off. Um, that actually seemed to help with top speed a little bit. Uh, it got a little bit quieter too. It's a little quieter in there and not as whooshy sounding. Um, another thing I ended up doing was I ended up enlarging my cheater holes a decent amount, probably 20 or 30 percent. And then I just put screens over them for now because I fly off of dirt normally. So you can kind of see where I cut some material away. Um, I cut it back about a half an inch away from this seam right there so i when i did that i noticed that it got a lot quieter which means that there's less turbulent air going into the fans and performance wise my friends i had never flown this before i did that mod i did the mod before i ever flew it but my friends flew theirs and then did this mod and they noticed a decent performance increase so if you want to try it give it a whirl it takes a few minutes with an exacto blade just make sure that you round off this this lip right here so the air flows smoothly into the fan and uh yeah that's it for the inlet mods um let's see so the servos everyone's disregard this <laughs> had a bad landing uh the servos so everyone's freaking out about the servos um what i ended up doing this these are the replacement servos that they send you so they recommend using this hole i put it into this one um because within the center hole I noticed that I was able to easily stall the servo while trying to actuate it. I put in the, in the very first hole and that pretty much went away and it was able to kind of push through the pressure I was trying to create, 
trying to simulate flight loads. Not very scientific, but it is what it is. So I did that just for a little bit of added safety, get a little more torque out of the servo. One thing that does do is it kind of limits your throw. I pretty much have this at max um, throw, and it's enough. It's definitely enough to do crazy stuff while flying high alpha, and I can lift the nose off the ground at low speeds and rotate slowly and things like that. Um, another thing you guys need to look out for, uh, when I got this out of the box, um, these are not the factory screws. So one of the screws was missing, which I didn't even notice at first, and the other one was loose. And if you take those out, you'll notice that they're very small, very short screws. And I didn't like the fact that my airplane was riding on hopes and dreams of those two little tiny screws not pulling out. So what I did was I got some longer screws with little washers and threaded those right, right, right into there and made me feel a little more warm and cozy inside than the factory little screws. So I put those in there. Like I said, I've got the thing on the first hole. Did a little airbrushing, but I was flying this thing in a really stupid wind and it just popped off the ground all of a sudden on a, a touch and go. And it pretty much destroyed the front retract unit and it smashed the back and creased the bottom a little bit. But uh, yeah, so let's go over flight control throws next. So again, on my CG, just to show you now, you can see the actual marking. Uh, when I hold it with my finger, I'm actually like back here. So I'm about half an inch behind that mark. Okay, so we're going to go over the control throws now. I have my helper over here, Bentley. All right, so, oh boy, let me scoot this back. So this is what we have for elevator throw. Okay, go full up. So it looks like we are at about 34 millimeters at the front of the elevator. Okay, go down. And full down, we are at about 40 millimeters. Okay. Now let's do ailerons. Actually, let's do rudders. So go back for a second. Okay, go full right. So we're at about 35. Okay, go full left. Then 35-ish. Okay. And I actually haven't even measured these. I kind of set the airplane up uh, based on what I thought looked right, and then I adjusted from there. So this, this is the first time I've actually measured these. All right, so let's do full left aileron. So we are at about, well, that's probably closer. To that. So we're at about 25 millimeters. Okay, go the other way, right? And about 25 millimeters. All right. And then do the flaps, which are those big ones right there. Oh, I mean the back ones. Oh. Yeah, hang on a second. Say, so can you go up real quick? All the way up. All right, so let's do the first notch of flap. So first notch is at about uh, 17 millimeters, and second notch, we're at about 43 or so millimeters. And I'm not running any mix with my flaps. I'm just running them neutral. I like the way that feels. It um, doesn't feel like there's any need for a mix. So um, as far as Expo goes, I'm running about 30% on the elevators and about 20 on the ailerons and about 15 on the, on the rudders. Um, that's pretty much my setup. Uh, let me talk about uh, the way it flies and some of the things I like and don't like about it. Okay, so um, now that we've gone over the setup, some of the mods I've done, um, let me talk about the way the airplane flies. Overall, uh, I really like this airplane. Um, and just for starters, no, I'm not sponsored by Motion. I don't, I'm not getting paid to say nice things, but uh, this, this airplane flies exceptionally well. It's very stable. Um, it does a lot of things really well. It's easy to land, super easy to land, nose high, full flaps, power on, and you can just grease this thing. It is so fun to do high high alpha landings. Um, 
it flies inverted really well. That was one of the other things that uh, adding the reflex fixed was not that it didn't fly inverted very well before, but after I did the little re you know a little bit of reflex in there, it flew inverted much easier uh, with much less input. Um, it actually knife edges pretty well, surprisingly. Having two tails, sometimes jets don't do very well with that. They usually have a lot of coupling, but uh, I found that it actually knife edges pretty easy. Um, there's uh, It rolls real nice. Like I said, I'm using a complete stock setup on this for once. So usually I kind of go extreme when I do all my own stuff and I get rid of the blue box and everything. But I thought, yeah, you know what, I'm just going to do it straight out of the box this time. Well, mostly straight out of the box. And uh, leave all the flight controls the way they are from the factory. So um, I decided to leave the blue box in. Um, but uh, yeah, it rolls excellent. Very nice. Very very axial. Uh, like I said, inverted. Um, you can do some pretty neat uh, high alpha maneuvers with it. Um, it'll actually high alpha inverted very well. Which is kind of fun because you lose your roll control at that point. But you still have full rudder control. And you can steer it around while it's inverted nose high with the rudders, which is kind of fun. Um, it's it's a very, very playful airplane. That's what makes it enjoyable to fly. Um, I have a lot of airplanes that fly very well, but there's certain things you can't do with them. This airplane, however, um, you can really kind of push, push the envelope, as they say, as far as trying out maneuvers. And uh, you can fly it you know, fast and smooth, or you can fly it slow and high angles of attack and yank on it and crank on it. And just, I do all kinds of, done all kinds of crazy things, tail slides and snap rolls and crazy stuff. So yeah, super happy with the airplane. Uh, the only one issue that, uh, can get you in trouble with this airplane is the thrust line. So if you're doing high alpha maneuvers and you have it very slow and you're holding full up and you're using a throttle to modulate your, your altitude, um, if you get to a point where the airplane gets too slow and you decide to power up, to go to full power, uh, it happened to me, so it can happen to anybody. But uh, I basically got the airplane to where it was in high alpha and uh, because of the thrust line, it wants to push the nose up. If, you'll, if you've ever done a slow pass with this model at medium power or low power, then give it full power all at once, you'll see the nose pitch up. So um, that's one thing you look out for. So what happened was I got into a high alpha, and because of the thrust line, the nose wouldn't come down. It doesn't have enough power to power out of it, so it just kept falling, and then it got turned downwind, and it was really windy, and it turned into a mess. It, um, thankfully, I was up really high when I started doing it. It was early on with my uh, high angles of attack experimentation. And I learned real quick that uh, <laughs> the fastest way to get out of that is to chop the throttle. It's counterintuitive because you think you need to power out of it. But what happens is you chop the power, the nose comes down, you pick up speed, and then you're off flying again. Uh, I rode this thing out way too long trying to use the rudders and trying to roll it out. And it wouldn't respond to anything. It just stayed nose high and was wallowing down to the ground at full power. Um, I think thankfully I, I got a gust of wind that knocked one wing down and it turned back into the wind and I was able to save it. But after that, I went up and did some more experimenting and got it into the same situation, then chopped the power and the nose comes down real slow. Then you get back in the power, then you can accelerate out. So that's the only thing you need to look out for is if you get it really slow, if you're going to punch the throttle at a high angle of attack where you're basically at stall expect the nose to not come down at least for my airplane that might get worse with a farther aft cg maybe with the cg at the factory location it doesn't do that but uh that's one thing i've noticed that there is a little bit of pitch up with full throttle application now at speed you won't really notice that um like if you're at three quarter power and you're going fast and you give it full power it's not going to change the pitch of the airplane only at low speed will you see that change in pitch um, other than that, uh, I really like the airplane. Like I said, it's a very large model. Um, I don't know if Alpha intended on this, but uh, I like all these little plastic pieces. Like, for instance, uh, when you put this on a stand like this, um, it rides in these plastic, and it doesn't dent it. Now, you can see right here where I got it onto the tail on my stand, and it dented it already because I 
I didn't realize I had it pushed back so far. Um, so just little neat things like that. It has these little plastic pieces everywhere. Um, there's even a little plastic piece back here, right here, which makes it nice for uh, hanging the model up so that ropes don't dig into the foam. Um, lots of little neat touches on this model. I think they did a wonderful job with the design. One thing I really like is how they did uh, plastic in the cockpit so it doesn't beat or you know bubble up. I plan on changing the pilot at some point and doing some paint work and all that stuff. But for now, I'm just flying a stock and really enjoying it. Probably put 30 or 40 flights on it. And uh, it's fast. It has great vertical. It flies wonderful. It looks excellent. Very skill outline. Um, there's not much to complain about, guys, if you're considering picking one up. I highly suggest it. Uh, don't freak out about the elevator servos. I know everyone online is going crazy. You know, they're, oh, they're going to crash it. If you set the model up per the manual, or if you even do a couple of changes like I did, there's nothing to worry about, guys. Um, and I've done full power dives with this thing. I've been just pulling on the elevator like crazy. I haven't had anything close to an elevator failure, um, anything close to a to an elevator failure yet. Uh, if I did, I wouldn't be looking at the model. I've pushed this thing very hard since I bought it. Um, and we were flying in the heat too. We were at an event last weekend. It was close to 100 degrees. And I was putting flight after flight. I pretty much had four or five sets of packs. And I flew it one pack after another without stopping. So the power system is solid. The flight controls are solid. The airplane is very strong. It goes together easy. Just not much to complain about. So hope you enjoyed this little video about my setup and mods. And comments on the way the airplane flies. If you have any questions or comments feel free to leave a comment on the video here <clears throat> and until next time we'll see you later